into those comments, to back them up with some clear, decisive action to show that we mean business when those statements and others like it have been made. And so therefore, I make a recommendation to the President. I respectfully say to them in his consultation with the military here in the coming weeks, actually that consultation is going along quite steadily, excuse me, a bit of a cold, that consultation is ongoing, take into consideration the need to send a sharp and clear message throughout the region to the United States and one that people can understand it. I think no clearer form of that than if the President were to announce on the 15th that in consultation with our senior military commanders, he's decided to initiate the first step in a withdrawal of our forces. I say to the President respectfully, pick whatever number you wish. You do not want to lose the momentum, but certainly in 160,000 plus say 5,000, could begin to redeploy and be home to their families and loved ones no later than Christmas of this year. That's the first step. Let the President establish the timetable of withdrawal, not the Congress. Under the Constitution as Commander-in-Chief, he has that authority. He need not lay out a totality of a timetable. I would advise against it. Take each step at a time, then make an evaluation of the impact of that step, that it did not lessen the momentum, did not lessen the ability of our forces to continue to supply a greater degree, provide a greater degree of security, be it Baghdad or where else we can do it and to determine what is the reaction of the neighboring countries and the region. Perhaps they've all been sitting there waiting to see what we would do. And given the NIE, which says, Mr. President, it's up to 12 months before we can expect any particular degree of reconciliation, we simply cannot, as a nation, stand and put our troops at continuous risk the loss of life and limb without beginning to take some decisive action which will get everybody's attention. That simple announcement of a single de redeployment of some several thousand individuals under the military tradition, first come, first serve in Iraq, first to depart. Got to be careful how those selections, they can pick them from various units, put together a group and send them back. Then evaluate, reevaluate how successful it has been. Then perhaps at the President's discretion, select a second date and time for a contingent to be redeployed. Now in my humble judgment, that'll get everybody's attention. The attention which is not being given to us at this time. I got on the airplane and I picked up the Jordan Times. And it's just, this is the type of thing that's written in, in periodicals and each and every one of you have read it. And they say in the Jordan Times, the Iraqis hold the key to any U.S. withdrawals. That's got to be dispelled. Our president holds the key to any U.S. withdrawals. And I think a step, as I've outlined, will make that eminently clear. And from that point, we'll just have to evaluate each and every decision the President makes with regard to further withdrawals. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll take your questions. Yeah. I, 